Hey, so welcome back, and this is another legal problem. So today we're going to do the question 2519, or count the number of KBIG indices. And so what you're given here is an array of integers, and we want to do exactly this. And so first question is, okay, what's KBIG indices? And so for this problem, uh, essentially what you want to do is for every number in here, as you're iterating along, you want to check these two conditions. And all it is, it's really simple, is that, okay, say if we're looking at this number here, 6, we want to see that there's at least k numbers on the left-hand side that are less than this current number, okay? And then also that there's k numbers on the right-hand side that are less than 6, okay? So say in this example, k is equal to uh, 2 here. We can see on the left-hand side, both two and three are less than six. So that validates the first condition. And then on the right-hand side, basically there's three numbers. So there's at least K uh, numbers on the right-hand side that are less than six. And so that validates uh, that side as well. Say if we also look at five here, we can then see, okay, for five, when we're looking here on the right-hand side, once again, we have K that are less than five on the right because five is greater than two, and it's also greater than uh, three here. But then also on the left-hand side, well, five is also greater than two and three on its uh, right-hand side, okay? And so essentially, if we look at this entire array here, you're going to see that, well, how many uh, numbers here meet this criteria? Well, it's just going to be uh, six and five because three won't have two on the left that it's uh, greater than, um, and then also on the right-hand side. Okay, so to actually implement this, the first insight that you're going to want to know is that this is going to be a uh, kind of using it two max heaps. It's a common uh, data structure that you're going to be dealing with, or I guess kind of programming pattern dealing with two max heaps. And so what that's going to allow us to do is essentially we're going to first uh, try to validate the first condition for each of these places, and then we're going to look at uh, validating the second condition for each one of these cases. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to validate the left condition for each one of these numbers. And so as we move along, we're going to be adding to our max heap such that we can maintain, okay, what is the highest numbers that we're looking at so far? But the trick here is that on our max heap, it's only going to be size of k, okay? So what that's going to allow us to do is we can maintain here, say we're at this position uh, 6, on our max heap, we're going to have 2, and then also 3. And so we can basically look at, I guess it's going to be max heap, so 3 is going to be on the top. And so when we're at 6, we can say, okay, um, what is the number at the top? Well, that's 3. And because we know that 6 is greater than 3 here, then we know that, well, because this has k numbers and it's bigger than the highest number on this max heap, then we know that it meets that condition. And so we can basically have an array um, that basically validates for each one of these points whether or not it meets the left condition. So this could be like uh, meets left condition left condition, right? And so we know at this point here, uh, index two, this is in fact true, okay? And so essentially just as we move along here, we're going to be maintaining our max heap as well as um, signaling where we're meeting this uh, left condition. And then simply to uh, then evaluate the second criteria, we do the exact same thing, but in reverse. So we're actually going to be going from the right side to the left side, still maintaining this max heap, but from right to left. And then simply whenever we want to increment the count, so we just say initially the count is zero. So whenever we meet the criteria for the right condition, we then check, okay, we met the right condition. Then let's look up inside of our uh, array here, whether or not at this index it also meant the left, and if so, we increment it. Okay, but if this doesn't make much sense, I really think the code uh, really helps simplify things, so let's uh, 
get straight to coding. Awesome, see you in a sec. Okay, so welcome back and let's go ahead and implement the code for this. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do here is that we want to return uh, some count of all the numbers that meet uh, both condition one and condition two here. And so we just want to maintain that into this integer. And then of course we want to have this array here of what numbers uh, meet first the left condition. So we can just say uh, left or valid uh, condition one maybe, something like that. And so this initially is going to be an array where they're all simply false here. And of course we want to maintain our max heap uh, throughout this algorithm. So we'll do that as well. Um, and so the first thing that we're gonna want to do is check if condition one is met. And so we're going to go from the left-hand side towards the right-hand side to see if the left condition is being met. So let's go ahead and iterate through uh, for every number um, in our array of nums here, like so. And so we also want to grab the index here, so we'll enumerate it. And so the first thing that we're gonna to want to check is, okay, well, have we seen that this condition is met? And if so, let's mark it as valid. And so that's going to be okay if there's at least k numbers on our heap because we need k numbers to be less than the current number on its left-hand side. So as long as there's k numbers on the heap and the biggest number that's on this max heap um, is actually less than the current number. And so that's going to look like okay and the max heap whatever is at the top of it is actually less than the current number here. In Python, you just negate it because there's no max heap in Python, there's only min heap. And the way around that is just to basically negate everything. All right, and so if this is the case, then we know that at this particular index, uh, the condition one has been met, so let's set it to true. The only other thing that we have to maintain here for this first condition is that, okay, well, if um, the length of our max heap is greater than k, then let's go ahead and pop uh, from our max heap here because we only want to have k numbers on there. And then also, well, we want to be constantly pushing to our max heap so that we can continue to find the smallest k numbers on its left-hand side. All right, so we're going to basically heap push to our max heap, the current number, and we just negate it because it's Python and that's the only way to get a max heap in Python. All right, so now that we've seen which numbers in this valid condition array have met the left-hand side, let's go ahead and find out what also has been uh, met the right-hand side by basically doing the exact same thing, but from right to left rather than from left to right. Okay, and so to do that, we just want to centrally reset our max heap back to being empty. And we want to continue to iterate through this list here but we're going to want to basically do it um, in reverse. And so we can do it like so. So let's just put this right there. And so from here, we still want to make this check because this is still how we can continue to uh, see if the uh, right-hand side of the current number has K numbers that are less than it. But then also we're going to want to check that also at this particular index, then the left condition was also met. And if that's true, then we know that both the left and the right conditions have met. And so we can actually increment our count by one. And so from here, we want to be continuing to push to our heap like we were doing before, but then also be popping so that we're only maintaining on this kind of right-hand side max heap a K numbers there. Okay, so let's go ahead and try running that. Oh, it looks like we are getting an issue here, so it's always returning zero. So clearly our count is not being incremented. So let's see, initially it's zero, and val condition one, it is being set to true. So this must be wrong here. So length of the max heap, we wanna make sure that it's equal to k, not greater than k. Okay, let's try running that again, looks good and success. So that is today's LeetCo problem. It's um, a great uh, Amazon interview question. And I think it um, really helps teach you a lot, really about learning how to work with max heap, but also the very popular uh, kind of two heap uh, pattern that you see in a lot of these questions. It's kind of hard to intuitively pick up when to use uh, two max heaps, but I think for me, 
um, when I was looking at this, just understanding that, okay, these two conditions, can I kind of split it up in a way such that um, I can take one on at once? And once I thought of that, immediately when I'm thinking, okay, how would I just solve, you know, and kind of cover it uh, for this first condition? And so just instinctively looking at the array, I could kind of see how I could use a max heap approach in order to solve that. So I think just me thinking about how would I split this problem up um, and then take on one condition at a time kind of led to me thinking of using a max heap. And then because there's two steps to this problem, using two max heaps. Okay, so yeah, hope it helped a little bit and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.